Hi, very good morning. I am Dr. Janak J. Patel, MD, General Physician. All my video lectures are mainly for educative purpose. In continuity with the previous ECG series, today I am going to discuss regarding one common disorder which we usually skip we usually miss so it is not very uncommon neither it is very rare we will be talking about ARVD or we call arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia or arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy and in another group which is having a ARVD but there are some additional symptoms and signs we call Nexos syndrome so these two things we'll be discussing together so ARVD or ARVC or Nexos syndrome ARVD means arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia and ARVC means arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy and there is a Nexo syndrome which is ARVD plus some other clinical findings and the commonest thing what we come across in ARVD is right ventricle involvement right ventricle wall undergoes fibro fatty fibrotic changes so there is a fat deposition with fibrosis involving right ventricle and right ventricle starts becoming dilated and it starts producing complications in the form of cardiac arrhythmias like ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation and on an ECG you see a slurred ascending S wave limb and there is a wave called as epsilon wave and this is very commonly seen in V1 and that is how you suspect ARVD with a strong family history that is called epsilon wave we will be talking under all this heading definition etiology pathophysiology clinical features investigations differential diagnosis treatment and complications so by definition ARVD is an arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy it is basically a primary disease of unknown etiology which is characterized by progressive loss of myocardium and that is being replaced by fatty tissue or fibro fatty replacement and that accounts for cardiac electrical instability leading to cardiac arrhythmias like ventricular premature beat, ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation and that can end into sudden cardiac death so there are different names given to that arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia or cardiomyopathy that's why it is also called ARVC and it is basically one variety of inherited cardiomyopathy this because of structural and functional abnormality you get a right ventricular wall being replaced by fatty tissue or by fibro fatty tissue and that results into scar tissue which will produce ventricular arrhythmias so it is heritable or we call inherited under recognized heart muscle disorders which is predominantly affecting right ventricle very occasionally left ventricle is affected and because of that involvement of ventricular wall there is a scar tissue formation and there is a risk of ventricular arrhythmia it is an autosomal dominant there is a desmosomes which is having a mutation there is a desmosome protein gene which is mutated 
and that gives rise to thinning of right ventricle which is being replaced by fibro fatty infiltration so normal myocardium is replaced by fibro fatty infiltration and because it gives rise to cardiac arrhythmia like ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation if unrecognized and untreated person can have a sudden cardiac death so in this particular variety there is a mutation of desmoplakin pleco plecophilin desmoglein and desmocolin these are the different protein receptors which are being present and most common being plecophilin and desmosomes receptors and those because of those mutation in those receptor there is a progressive loss of myocardium and it it is replaced by fibro fatty tissue we already mentioned arvd or arvc it is an autosomal dominant in almost 30 to 50% of the people it mainly involves right ventricle but may involve lv and because the right ventricle undergoes dilatation and thinning of the wall person may present with a heart failure and because of scar tissue ventricular arrhythmias good number of time it is unrecognized so person can develop sudden cardiac death incidence wise 1 in 5000 male are more prone as compared to female and 17% of sudden cardiac death in young athletes is probably be due to arvd so it becomes a very important to diagnose such patients and it can be prevented so this is a peculiar presentation you can see this is an lv which is having a wall which has to be thicker than rv and you can see there is a thinning of the right ventricular wall and it is replaced by this fibro fatty tissue this is fibro fatty tissue so there is involvement and you will see a peculiar wave which is called an epsilon wave which is best seen in v1 you can see in v1 v2 and v3 sometimes but best seen in v1 so pathologically if you see there is a myocardial atrophy that myocardium is replaced by fibro fatty tissue right from epicardium towards endocardium there is inflammation and fibrosis there is a thinning of the wall there is an enlargement of the right ventricular chamber and you can have even aneurysm formation in a right ventricle these are the changes which takes place because of a fibro fatty replacement you can have involvement of the infundibular part or diaphragmatic part of rv or apical part so you call infundibular dysplasia or apical dysplasia or diaphragmatic dysplasia and these are all the different types of genes which are being responsible and depending upon those genes and clinical findings etc arvd diagnostic criteria is on the ground of ecg or holter monitoring this is an ecg monitoring on eco and on the biopsy and family history and mutation study so there are three criteria in ecg there is one criteria in an eco and there is two criteria as far as histopathology is concerned family history and genetic is concerned now this all this criteria has got major or minor so in ecg you will have ventricular tachycardia with left bundle branch block pattern presentation and if s wave is longer than 500 then there is a repolarization abnormalities in ecg that is what we call as epsilon wave and depolarization abnormality in the form of prolonged s wave 
and on echo or on cardiac MRI or by angiography, you demonstrate there is a functional and structural RV alteration. You can have according to that major criteria and minor criteria on histopathology by myocardial biopsy or there is a strong family history and there is a genetic mutation which can be seen then two major or one major with two minor or four minor criteria will make the diagnosis of ARVD or ARVC whatever name you give now along with this ARVD if person has got woolly hair and person has got keratoderma in palm and plantar surface then it is labeled as nexos syndrome so nexos disease or nexos syndrome or nexos arrhythmogenic cardiocutaneous syndrome arrhythmogenic is arvd involving heart and cutaneous means palmar and plantar keratoderma with woolly hair which is a autosomal recessive and there is a mutation of this what we call as a plecoglobin and desmoplecin gene, gene mutation and there will be strong family history there was an island called as a nexus island so it was very commonly seen in those particular group hence the name was given nexus disease or nexus syndrome and mutation is there in a plecoglobin gene so it is called nexus syndrome or nexus disease so you have got a woolly hair and it is generally present from birth you will have a ARVD which is at adult age group and along with that you have got a palmo plantar keratoderma and it starts from early life so that is nexus syndrome you can see woolly hair you can see keratoderma and ARVD so woolly hair hyperkeratosis of palm and soul and arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy and there is a genetic mutation of placoglobin you label that as nexus disease or nexus syndrome you can see very clearly those woolly hair plantar keratoderma and cardiomyopathy which is which you have to prove that it is ARVD again same palmar and plantar keratoderma woolly hair involvement of right ventricle epsilon wave and ventricular tachycardia and that ventricular tachycardia will have a LBBB pattern so in V1 you will have a negative complex and in V5 V6 you will have a upright complexes woolly hair hyperkeratosis in palm and soul and involvement of myocardium replaced by fiber fatty infiltration so typical ARVD thinning of right ventricle fiber fatty dip replacement and there is an epsilon wave so this is peculiar of epsilon wave along with ECG showing you an RBBB pattern and you can demonstrate right ventricular wall thinning and dilatation on echo so that will be peculiar in a case of a ARVD or it is sometimes described as a dysrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy so instead of arrhythmogenic dysrhythmogenic word is being replaced sometimes So among the major criteria and minor criteria, among the major criteria, severe dilatation and reduction in the RV ejection fraction with no LV impairment. There may be localized RV aneurysm 
and you will demonstrate akinesia or dyskinesia with diastolic bulging. This too will be demonstrable on even severe segmental dilatation will be demonstrable on echocardiography. Fibrofatty replacement of myocardium will be on endomyocardial biopsy. And on ECG, epsilon wave or localized prolongation of QRS complex more than 110 millisecond, which will be seen in V1 and V3. And strong family history confirmed by biopsy or by genetic mutations. So this will be in a major criteria. Minor criteria wise on eco mild global dilatation and ejection fraction reduction with a normal LV, mild segmental dilatation of RV, regional hypokinesia, this will be minor criteria on eco, inverted T wave in a right precordial lid that is we call as a V1, V2, V3 in absence of right bundle branch block that will be ECG criteria. Late potential signals may be seen in an ECG that will be again a minor criteria. And if a person gets a sustained VT or a non-sustained VT, it will be left bundle branch block pattern. There will be ventricular extrasystole which can be one, more than 1000 in 24 hours on halter monitoring. There will be family history of a premature death less than 35 years due to suspected ARVC. These are all minor criteria. So if you get a two major criteria or one major with two minor or four minor, it will be in favor of ARVD or ARVC. So these are major criteria on ECO. These are MRI criteria. This is on NGO. So these are major criteria. These are minor criteria. So two major or one major plus two minor or four minor definite diagnosis. If you have got one major and one minor or three minor borderline and if it is only one major or only two minor then possible, probable. We can use the word probable or possible. This is borderline, not 100%. This is definite. So this is how you proceed. So you should have an echocardiography like regional RV, akinesia, dyskinesia or aneurysm or you have got an RV outlet more than 32 millimeter and this is 36 millimeter on this view. MRI, regional RV, akinesia, dyskinesia and RV and diastolic index more than 110 in male and less than 40% ejection fraction in female and on NGO, regional RV alkinesia, this will be all included in major criteria. Also biopsy should be included and strong family history with genetic mutation and this will be all minor criteria. At your leisure time, you can go through. So among MRI findings, major criteria are this. These are minor criteria at your leisure time and these are called revised task 4 criteria, which includes regional RV akinesia, dyskinesia and dyschronous RV contraction and calculation of ejection fraction. Less than 40% it is a major criteria and if end diastolic volume is more than 110 ml in male and 100 ml in female, it becomes a major criteria and if it is less than 100 or less than 110, it is minor criteria and if ejection fraction is between 40 to 45, then it is a minor criteria, less than 40, major criteria. So two major or one major, two minor or four minor. Diagnosis of ARVD. Now, on endomyocardial biopsy, you can demonstrate fibroadipose tissue. It is progressive, there is a strong family history, it is right since birth, and there is a chance of 
sudden cardiac death in young adults. So ICD implantation almost in all patients who are symptomatic and in whom you demonstrate ventricular arrhythmias should be considered. These are all the different names ARVC, ARVD and DRVC. These are the three different names which are given to the same conditions. So it is basically a inherited disorders. Incidents we have already mentioned. Sorry. One in 5,000. Male more common than female. And 17% of the sudden cardiac death in a young athletes. And these are the gene mutation which takes place. And it is basically an autosomal dominant variety. While Nexus syndrome is autosomal recessive variety. And this is a mutation in desmoplakin, placophilin, desmoglein and desmocholin. But most common is placophilin gene mutation. And these are all different types of mutation which can be there. All different types of mutation. And person can have RV involvement more common as compared to LV. And in this type of mutation, person will have a LV more involved as compared to RV. But by and large, RV is always more involved as compared to LV. LV is rarely involved. And this is the replacement of a fibrofatty tissue in RV bomb. And this is an epsilon wave. So these are placoglobin, placophilin, desmoplakin, desmoglein and desmocholin. So you can have mutation in any one of this gene. And because of that replacement, you get a scar tissue and you will have a re-entrant ventricular tachycardia. Scar induced re-entry tachycardia. So it looks like this. This is LV and this is RV. You can see the thinning of the wall. And it is replaced by fibro fatty tissue. As far as clinical manifestation is concerned, good number of time the patient is asymptomatic. 80% of the patient with ARVD will present with syncope whenever they develop cardiac arrhythmias, palpitation and good number of times sudden cardiac death. And symptoms are usually exercise related. Right ventricle is more involved as compared to left ventricle. And because of right ventricular dilatation, there is an RV dysfunction and person can also present with what we call is right ventricular failure signs. And scar tissue will give rise to arrhythmias which can be ventricular ectopics, ventricular tachycardia and it can end into ventricular fibrillation. When red, left ventricle starts getting involved, the symptoms of left ventricular dysfunction will also appear. So commonest presentation is palpitation. You can see it is almost in 67% of the people. Syncope is in 32. Atypical chest pain in 27. RV failure is present in 6.2. And 6.2 equal number is asymptomatic. And person who develops tachyarrhythmias will have a very high chance of developing sudden cardiac death. So there will be one group of people who are considered who will have a normal ECG, normal on a halter monitoring and normal structure. Difficult to prove even on an echo. Almost it looks normal. So ECG will be normal, halter monitor will be normal and echocardiography will be also normal. Second group of people will present as there will be electrical changes so you will get something on an ECG. You will have some finding on an halter monitor. So you will have T wave inversion in V1 and V2 on ECG. And halter monitor, you will be demonstrating some changes like PVC, etc. And 
when you do an eco you will have some amount of structural changes which will be seen on an eco while a uh, established variety or we call structural changes definitely will get something on an ecg t wave inversion major depolarizations in the form of epsilon wave and multiple ventricular premature bits you might have ventricular tachycardias etc and on eco you will see an rv dysfunction rv dilatation thinning of the right ventricular wall and even on endomyocardial biopsy you will be able to demonstrate fibro fatty infiltration of right ventricular wall what about epsilon wave epsilon wave will be after end of s wave so in an ecg you get typical qrs duration will be more than 110 millisecond and it will be best seen in v1 to v3 v1 v2 v3 you will have t wave inversion you will have rs r dash pattern that is rbbb which can be complete or incomplete and s wave will be prolonged the upstroke of s wave will be more than 55 millisecond what we call as terminal activation duration short form it is called tad from end of the rs wave till st segment that is called terminal activation duration this terminal activation duration in a normal person is always less than 55 millisecond but here that is prolonged and this is a characteristic in case of an arvd so this is a peculiar ecg finding in case of an arvd so you can have no rbbb incomplete rbbb or complete rbbb so you can diagnose depending upon this ecg finding whether it is clear cut arvd or there is no arvd and for that you have to have a repolarization criteria t wave inversion criteria and you have got you have to have a r to s ratio in v1 epsilon wave is seen almost in 30% of the people t wave inversion is a most common finding which is seen in almost 85% of the ecg there is a prolonged s stroke up stroke which is best seen in v2 and v3 qrs complex is wider more than 110 millisecond and if you get an episode of vt it will be a lbbb morphology so epsilon wave inversion of t wave prolonged upstroke of s wave more than 55 millisecond which is seen in almost 95% of the people so t wave inversion upstroke of s wave prolongation are the common finding more than epsilon wave and localized qrs widening more than 110 millisecond is another important finding and if you get a ventricular tachycardia there will be lbbb pattern these are the peculiarity ecg findings in arvd so it is an autosomal dominant there is an epsilon wave fibro fatty replacement of the right ventricle ventricular arrhythmias person will very frequently present with syncope and sudden cardiac death and they are often exercise related hence the person who are athletes if they have got arvd the chance of sudden cardiac death increases you can demonstrate those by cardiac mri and to prevent sudden cardiac death implantable cardiac defibrillator is the answer and which helps a lot so progressive replacement of the myocardium by fibro fatty tissue in right ventricle can go into ventricular tachycardia with lbbb morphology and if there is an epsilon wave seen in a v1 to v3 always suspect arvd epsilon wave is a post excitation phenomena while delta wave is a pre excitation phenomena epsilon wave is most commonly seen in a v1 to v3 
very rarely it is seen in an inferior lid that is lid 3 lid 2 lid 3 avf t wave inversion is more common qrs widening is more common and prolonged upstroke of s wave is more common prolonged upstroke of s wave more than 55 millisecond qrs widening more than 110 millisecond and t wave inversion these are the three most common finding followed by epsilon wave now this epsilon wave you can make it more prominent if they are not seen clearly in v1 v2 v3 by what we call is a fontaine lids where you put a right arm lid on the manubrium sternum, left arm lid at the ziphy sternum, and left lower limb lid in a mid clavicular line on left side in the fifth intercostal space. And then you take F1, F2, and F3 lid, and that will show you a very clear cut. Epsilon wave will be picked up. So right arm is over manubrium sternum, left arm is over the ziphoid process and left lower limb is placed at V4 position which is a fifth intercostal space on the left side, mid clavicular line on the left side. And these positions, these three leads are called fontaine leads. Between RA and LA is F1 lead, RA and LL is called F2 leads and lead left arm and left lower limb is f3 leads and this will give you f1 f2 and f3 you can see the difference this is a normal leads this is a fontaine leads and you can pick up those epsilon wave can be seen so this can be utilized in some person in whom you do not get a classical epsilon wave so f1 f2 and f3 leads F1, F2 and F3 leads. This is here clearly you can see an epsilon wave, T wave inversion and upstroke will be prolonged more than 55 millisecond. So that will be characteristics. This you can see a ventricular tachycardia of LBBB pattern. That is again one criteria in favor of ARVD. So the person who are symptomatic, strong family history, who has already got documented ARVD and there is history of sudden cardiac death and the age was less than 40, some people say less than 35 and person had ICD implant. That is one point strongly in favor. Family member is having ARVD or sudden cardiac death or athletes who are pre-participating screening is going on. This history should be taken. 12 lead ECG should be taken. And in a 12 lead ECG, T wave inversion in V2. Precordial QRS pro prolongation more than 110 millisecond. And upstroke of S wave more than 55. And there is a presence of epsilon wave. Very good for diagnosis of ARVD. And on halter monitoring for 24 to 48 hours, ECG shows ventricular ectopic or non sustained ventricular tachycardia or ventricular tachycardia and on echocardiography you demonstrate RV dimensions are changing, you have got hypokinesia, akinesia or dyskinesia and RV ejection fraction is reduced. Cardiac MRI gives you RV dimension, kinetic abnormality and tissue characteristic can be demonstrated by endomyocardial biopsy. And you can undergo regular and molecular histopathology or you can ask for a molecular genetic investigations. Then depending upon the finding, you can go for the major criteria, minor criteria. Two major or one major with two minor or four minor straightforward in diagnosis of ARVD or ARVC. So assessment of a right ventricular arrhythmogenic dysplasia or ARVD is done by history, strong family history, ECG, halter monitoring, echo, 
कार्डिक एम आर आई जेनेटिक बायोप्सी और जेनेटिक टेस्टिंग वी कॉल जेनेटिक सॉरी नॉट बायोप्सी जेनेटिक टेस्टिंग एंड एंडोमायोकारियल बायोप्सी वी ऑलरेडी मेंशन टू मेजर हंड्रेड परसेंट वन मेजर विथ टू माइनर अगेन एंड फोर माइनर these are ecg findings we have discussed so many time this is cardiac mri and there is a risk stratification you have to find out the amount of risk like cardiac arrest ventricular tachycardia age male sex cardiogenic syncope t wave inversions number of ventricular premature beats in 24 hours and reduce rv ejection fraction or lv involvement main treatment part is conservative restriction to the exercise pharmacological treatment as far as a beta blocker is concerned or sotalol or amiodarone or flaconide and if a person has got a very high chance of getting tachyarrhythmias icd if not successful ablation so diagnosis is by revised task 4 which we already discuss which is on ventricular dysfunction you can demonstrate by cardiac mri or by doing an eco tissue by endomyocardial biopsy ecg will show you repolarization abnormality depolarization conduction abnormality arrhythmias this will be on ecg and strong family history and family history of sudden cardiac death in a young individual all those criteria so all those ecg criteria eco criteria cardiac mri criteria all those will be useful and these are the differential diagnosis as far as the syncope is concerned aortic condition electrical abnormalities you have to keep it in mind brugeda long qt short qt catecholaminergic polyventricular tachycardia wpw syndromes etc then some of the electrolyte abnormalities particularly you should keep it in mind hypokalemia hypomagnesemia then commotia cordis certain drugs valvular heart disease like aortic stenosis mitral valve prolapse coronary artery disease some of the muscle disorders particularly hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy all those condition myocarditis dilated cardiomyopathy and among aortic aortic rupture marfan syndromes these are the dangerous condition if they can mimic identical like arvd you should keep it in mind and you can have a syncope as a common symptoms so these are all the different types of electrolyte imbalance brugeda arvd hypertrophic or obstructive cardiomyopathy wpw person with ecg and osborne wave which can be due to hypercalcemia hypothermia subarachnoid hemorrhage certain medications or you can have a lafb posterior fascicular blocks long qt short qt etc these are all the different groups and these are all different types of cardiac arrhythmia hyperkalemia hypokalemia hypercalcemia hypocalcemia hypermagnesemia hypomagnesemia these are all the dangerous conditions they can end up with sudden arrhythmias etc and even sudden cardiac death we'll be discussing in detail in one electrolyte imbalance and ecg relation i have already put a video on killer ecg you can go through that in all those this different types of ecg i have discussed that now there is something called as rvot vt and arvd vt i am not going into detail if you are interested at your leisure time you can go through little highlights in arvd ecg will show you classical epsilon wave while which will not be seen with the rvot qrs complex will be notch and wide mainly in case of arvd but it is not seen in a rvot T wave inversion is more commonly seen in ARVD rather than a RVOT. If you keep this thing is in mind, you will be able to differentiate. It is a RVOT, ventricular outlet tract, ventricular tachycardia, or it is ARVD. These are very very common. 
and we already told you ARVD will be mainly with an LBBB pattern. It is a monomorphic. This will be more wide, this will be less wide. Eco will show you entire RV will be normal. While here you will see the RV wall thinning, hypokinesia, akinesia, dyskinesia, etc. will be more commonly seen. LV function may be affected in a ARVD while RVOT will be LV function will be normal. In cardiac MRI you will see a lipid infiltration. Risk of sudden cardiac death is much more in ARVD rather than RVOT, ventricular tachycardia. Ablation will be more effective in a RVOT rather than in case of uh, ARVD VT. Intracardiac defibrillator will be more often useful in ARVD rather than RVOT. This is a difference between symptomatic ARVD and asymptomatic. In asymptomatic variety, mainly we go for a follow-up and beta blocker. And occasionally they require beta blocker with ICD and very rarely they would go undergo ablation. While in a symptomatic, most commonly they require ICD. And in a low risk group, beta blocker followed by uh, ablation. That may be the thing. So, treatment will be exercise restriction, beta blocker, and ICD and ablation. And this will be the, you have to reduce the trigger by reducing the exercise and lifestyle modification. Arrhythmia can be reduced by drugs like beta blocker or you can undergo ablation and if you want to prevent a sudden cardiac death implantable defibrillator so same thing what we have discussed before as far as complication is concerned cardiac arrhythmia particularly ventricular tachycardia which can end up into sudden cardiac death so I end my lecture here I hope this lecture will be helpful to you if you like this particular lecture, don't forget to press button like, subscribe, press bell icon so that you can get notification whenever I upload a next lecture. If you feel this lecture is helpful to you, don't forget to share with your friends. It may be helpful to those people. This will be very helpful to the fourth year students, exam going students and person who are going to practice in ICU and private practice. If you have got any suggestions, please do not forget to give your suggestions so that I can improve on my this CME lectures. All this material I have gathered from YouTube, Google, slideset.com and in a YouTube particularly very commonly I collect the material from Dr. Eric Strong Medicines Lectures. JJ Medicine Lectures, etc. Lot of video lectures are available on YouTube. So thank you for taking out time. I know that your time is valuable and I appreciate that for spending some of the time with me. So thank you once again. See you in next lecture.